When you create a virtual machine, you will have the option to choose a Generation 1 or a Generation 2. A Generation 1 is now considered a legacy uh, virtual machine. Not often would you choose that option. Some of the characteristics would be it supports 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. The newer standard, the Generation 2 or Gen 2 we'll call it, only supports 64-bit operating systems. So if you intended to deploy a 32-bit OS, you would have to choose Gen 1. So that's one requirement. Gen 1 is also limited to a max of a 2 terabyte boot volume. Now that's pretty large. Most machines won't need a boot volume quite that large. And it also uses this legacy BIO setting. We will take a look at that in the next slide. The Gen 2, the other characteristics there. It supports secure boot and shielded virtual machines. That is just additional protection. Secure boot is something you see on a lot of physical computers. It ensures that none of the boot files themselves have been corrupted. They're protected, so an added layer of security. The shielded virtual machine will encrypt the virtual hard drives for the virtual machine, and it also restricts access from the Hyper-V host to the virtual machine. So with the shielded VM, you'll have to use something like remote desktop or some other remote management tool. You won't be able to simply go to the host and then click on a virtual machine and directly connect to the desktop of that virtual machine itself. An added layer of protection. Boot volumes go from two terabytes to a whopping 64 terabytes in size. And it also supports this, now many people still call it a BIOS, but it's this UEFI or UEFI, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Any computer you buy today is gonna have this. When you boot most computers, you'll see something like press F2 or press F12 to enter setup. That setup we routinely call the BIOS, but it's low level computer settings. That's where you would go if you wanted to enable or disable the hardware assisted virtualization for Hyper-V. If you want to change the boot order of a computer, you can go into the BIOS to do that. So it's those types of low level settings. Once you create the virtual machine, the generation you picked dictate which settings are actually available. Now, the settings themselves are grouped into hardware and management. So those would be the two categories. So we have our hardware and we have management settings uh, on both. The settings available will depend on the generation of the virtual machine. So when I look at my generation one, the first thing you notice, it has this BIOS Compare that to my generation two, and it has firmware. That's the UEFI. You'll also notice the generation two has these SCSI controllers. The generation one has these IDE controllers. These are just older legacy components. Also has these old COM ports. They are really never used now. So a lot of older settings that you most likely would never use will be in your generation one virtual machines where the gen two has all the new settings uh, you actually need. Now the management settings, they are the same. So no difference uh, in the management settings on either side, just hardware differences between the two. Now the rule of thumb is you always choose a generation two virtual machine unless you need a generation one, which pretty much means you need a 32 bit operating system or you are installing a legacy operating system. Now, Microsoft no longer supports Server 2008, but Server 2008 would have to be a Generation 1 virtual machine. If you're running 2012 or newer, it would be a Generation 2 virtual machine. Also worth noting, you can never change the generation of a virtual machine. So when you create this, if it's Gen 1, nothing you can do to change it to Gen 2. You'd have to delete and recreate the virtual machine if you wanted to make that change.